I definitely sure love to have this debate with others, especially when they come from another Canadian province that I live in. But I'm going to be talking about my home province, Alberta, here. Here's my next person blog, number 83. I'm going to call this one that Alberta, I think it's easy for me to say, being that I live in this province, that Alberta is the most diverse landscape province. And I'll explain what I mean by that, that there's definitely a lot of images that you think that comes to mind with Alberta here. I know what inspired this one was a couple of personal blogs ago, 81, I talked about that I think British Columbia is Canada's California here. However, I definitely got to make a personal blog boasting my home province in Alberta here. And, uh, you know, also, I always got to show pride for my team that I choose to cheer for in the Belle of Alberta here. However, you know, it's irrelevant in this case here, but uh, as I'm recording this, I use an Edmonton oil here, and i got to, you know, say condolences to the family and friends of Colby Cave there. He was an Edmonton oiler, and then, you know, he had some, you know, blood, blood in his brain there, or blood clot, or something like that, and he was only 25, and you know, definitely very sad that uh, passed away during Easter weekend, especially during this time when we we're dealing with this pandemic here. So, uh, you know, I've got to give my thoughts to that. As an Albertan as well, you know, it's irrelevant what side of the bell of Alberta you're on in this case here. So i got to put that in there as well. I just figured I wasn't going to make a separate video just on that. And there's plenty out there. But getting back to this personal vlog, talking about the province of Alberta and I just think it's the most diverse landscape province in Canada here. I would say this, the one thing we do not have is an ocean coast here because uh, geographically we're not right on an ocean coast there regardless if it's the Pacific Atlantic or the Arctic here. I guess the only thing you can maybe say come close to it is the Athabasca Lake way up in the northeast corner of Alberta there, that straddles Alberta in Saskatchewan here, but I mean there's definitely many iconic images that you can pick out for Alberta here. That, uh, I mean, you know, British Columbia you can think is mostly mountains on the coast there. I mean we tend to make fun of it in Saskatchewan being flat and boring on the prairie there, but uh, you know the prairie provinces there's definitely, uh, you know, prairies and fields here. And then I mean Ontario Maybe you can make a case, but, uh, you know, in Ontario, Quebec, you always think of, you know, stigious forests, you know, colorful trees, especially in the fall there, and then and there's very iconic images about being on the Atlantic coast in the Maritimes there. But when it comes back to my province here in Alberta, there's just, it's, it's very diverse, and that's one of the things I love about Alberta here. I mean, living in Calgary... It's very close to, you know, the Canadian Rockies. That's obviously one big uh, highlight that you can highlight Alberta with is the Canadian Rockies, you know, Banff and Jasper National Parks there. As well as the other, you know, mountain park that kind of gets uh, somewhat forgotten, but it's in its own identity, especially when it comes to its own national park and a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, because they call it the Canadian Rocky Mountain Parks, the one. But then you got the Waterton Glacier in Montana as an international peace park there so you just got the Canadian Rockies obviously straddling the uh, continental divide where the Alberta and British Columbia is so I mean that's definitely one iconic image that you can highlight Alberta with is the Canadian Rockies you know Banff Jasper National Park as well as Waterton especially with the Prince of Wales Hotel there that uh, you know that's the thing with living in Calgary is you're only a couple hours away from uh, some of these sites here, and, uh, you know, let's feel fortunate in that. And, you know, as someone who goes there fairly frequently, it just blows my mind that you have people that come from halfway around the world to see that, or they come to my city as a place to stay, or, you know, over the International Airport there, and then they see some sites in my hometown, and then go on tours to go to the mountains there. So that's just talking about the mountains here. But uh, another 
thing that makes it very unique here is we have some bad lens. It's called there. You know, you get those hoodoos there. I mean, the one highlight that uh, definitely gets all the attention for hoodoos here is, you know, a little town. I think now it's a town again. It used to be a city. Is Drumheller, where the Royal Terrell, Terrell Dinosaur Museum is. That's the big attraction in Drumheller there. You know, it's in a you know valley. You know, the Badlands there. You know, it, it kind of the best way to describe it is, let's say, you know, you're out in Utah. Like, not quite the Monument Valley, Utah, but, uh, you know, it's just very interesting. Especially if you come even during the, you know, the, not the shoulder seasons in spring and fall here, but, you know, definitely you get that kind of deserty feeling if you go in the summer, especially when it's a hot day. Or it's also interesting to see that in the winter there. It's kind of like the same as those iconic images that you see of a desert that you perceive to see it, but with snow. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, the Badlands in Alberta here. And other areas that, you know, besides Drum Heller, that, uh, you know, I like the Badlands here. I know just outside of the Badlands in Drum Heller there, there's this big canyon called Horseshoe Canyon there, and everyone stops to see that. But uh, I actually find one site more impressive here. It is quite out of the way. And it's actually called Dinosaur Provincial Park there. If you go, you know, going back to Calgary here, if you go east on the number one to Trans-Canada, a couple hours east drive, there's a city called Brooks. And you turn it off, you follow the signs there, it's about 45 kilometers away from Brooks one way there. So you're definitely got to dedicate uh, at least an hour and a half of your time to go here because it's 45 kilometers away from Brooks off of the number one highway there is Dinosaur Provincial Park and I actually find that site in that valley even more impressive than the Horseshoe Canyon there is also a you know, campground there so uh, Dinosaur Provincial Park there and then another area is where you know there's hoodoos and badlands there that you know around Donalda there I know there's a big when I last was there over 10 years ago and I believe it's still there the attraction of the world's tallest gas lamp there you know the old wick and the kerosene there you know there's definitely some interesting valleys there I know outside Drum Heller there's Rosebud there but other you know hoodoos that's also declared hoodoos there there's also some near Banff in Banff National Park there around the town site there but there's another community called uh, Milk River and actually it's also off of the Howie 4 there which is Milk River you know just North of the uh, Coots Sweetgrass border in uh, Montana, or the Alberta Montana border meets there. There's a writing on Stone Provincial Park there, and I know if you dig on my channel there, and I actually recorded that just on my you know camera camera back in 2008 there. That uh, there's a writing on Stone Provincial Park, Milk River there. You see the Sweetgrass Hills, which that's actually in Montana there, but there's definitely some other hoodoos in that area as well, but. Uh, you know, also, if you go there in the summertime, because, you know, in the southern parts of the province, especially the southwestern part there, you know, you got the Lethbridge and Mezzanotte area, it, get, it gets even hotter down there than it is here in uh, Calgary here. So, already, I'm talking about, I've already talked about, you know, the Canadian Rockies, which, obviously, I love that. And you got the Badlands, which is definitely another unique uh, landscape that, uh, you know, that's right here in Alberta here. And of course, you know, being one of the prairie provinces here, you definitely get a lot of impressive uh, prairies and farmland there. I know some parts of Alberta, as well as Saskatchewan and in Manitoba as well there. The one thing that's definitely uh, dying off, just because, you know, old architecture is grain elevators. You're seeing less less of those grain elevators, you know, the traditional wooden, like a wooden silo there where it feeds the, you know, stores the grain and dumps it in train cars there. If you still see some wooden grain elevators there, I definitely would suggest you, you know, stop and take a look and marvel at it because uh, they're now starting to be replaced with those concrete silos, which that's kind of the, you know, modern grain elevator there. And you definitely see that all over the province, you know, as well in Alberta. Well, I should go, also include Saskatchewan and Manitoba there, but, uh, you know, that's definitely another iconic image of Alberta 
when you especially go out east away from Calgary there you know they're still concentrated in the kind of the southern central part when it comes to the uh, population density there because if you look at a map I mean you got most of Alberta obviously is Edmonton south there but then there's still a ton a ton of Alberta that's north of Edmonton there and uh, you know I still want to try to make more trips where I find more reasons to go north of Alberta there and you know it always seems like when I go to Edmonton there it always ultimately involves going to a game a sporting game where I hope to watch the Calgary team win and I ultimately had that fixed with the Hunters of Grey Cup where I you know watched the Calgary Stampeders win the Grey Cup and come all stay with Edmonton there but uh, I mean it's definitely you know more landscape problems here and I have occasionally have gone up uh, in that northern part of the province there. I know that uh, I've been to White Court a few times and uh, I also last year, last summer there when I drove all the way to uh, Dawson Creek there, I mean I took the way where I drove up to Edmonton there and then I eventually took a little bit on 16 and I eventually started on Highway 43 and followed that all the way in Highway 43 Alberta. Yeah, I believe it's yeah, it's Highway 43. It turns into Highway 2 in British Columbia there where it eventually goes to Dawson Creek there but uh, away from the mountains, away from the prairies, and away from the badlands there where you got pockets of that in Alberta here you definitely start seeing more kind of a mix of prairie and you know forestry you know evergreen forest there and it definitely gives that different feeling more you definitely start feeling a little more of that tundra feeling there as you go further up into the province there or eventually you know where it was in that part of the province where you know Grand Prairie was the last uh, major city you know that it's pretty close to the Alberta British Columbia border there northern part of the province there I think that's almost where you're about the halfway point where if you look from you know the 49th parallels where the uh, Alberta Manitoba Montana border is from Canada West there and then the 60th parallel is where the north part of the province where it draws the line with the Northwest Territories border there and I know definitely that's one drive I definitely like to do, I mean Mackenzie Highway Drive, or eventually it's Highway 35 there. I can only imagine because I googled it and it's like, you know, it takes like 17, 18 hours to get to up there. I can only imagine what it would be like being up there. It's like, hey, I'm in Alberta, but I'm way the way heck up there. But uh, you see that Google Street View too, that, uh, you know, you just see how it's all forestry and, you know, get some big lakes and that out there. In the other part of the province, that also is the case with, uh, you know, parts of British Columbia and Saskatchewan and even in Manitoba there. I know there's some more marshy land up in Manitoba there where it also geographically goes up with the Hudson Bay there. But that's just another, you know, iconic image of Alberta there. And also that's where a lot more of the oil fields and oil sands of that is in Alberta there. The oil sands is definitely towards the eastern part of the province in Fort McMurray there and that's the thing I don't know if I'd ever it never has dawned on me to go visit Fort McMurray as a place to uh, visit I mean uh, I know up in that northern part of the province there well well north of Edmonton there I definitely uh, think it would definitely be impressive to go up there you know especially you know when you get longer nights there that uh, you see more of the northern lights there and also when you're away from the Big big cities. I mean, when you live in the live and work in the big city there, and uh, also live in an apartment right in the inner city there, and I did have some. I do have still some fascination with astronomy, looking at stars and planets there. You definitely don't see that as well in the big city because of all the bright lights here. But uh, definitely, I think that would be impressive to see that in the northern part of the province there. But uh, you know, it's definitely more diverse landscape where. Uh, you know, there's just definitely many, many images that you could pick out of Alberta there. That's where it's the challenge that, uh, you know, how could you pick one iconic image just of Alberta when I think it's such, such a land, diverse landscape province there. And I think it, Alberta is the most diverse landscape province of all the provinces in Canada. I mean, it's easier for me to say that since I lived there, but I see it for myself and, uh, you know, it's just, there's more than one iconic image that you could take of Alberta here. And then, you know, if you look at the Shield Crest and the uh, 
provincial flag there. It definitely summarizes up. You kind of got the marshland, you got the, you know, you got the prairies, and you got the foothills, and then you got the mountains there. And that's definitely summarizes it up there. And a couple areas that you definitely summarize that. Well, going back to the Waterton Lakes National Park there. Just before you enter in the heart of the town, the Waterton Town Site and the park there, and just north of where the uh, Prince of Wales Hotel is, and I know that's where the one area where a lot of bison are, but you know, you can look one way, you see mountains, and then you look the other way, you see prairies, and, uh, and then uh, maybe in between there you see the hills there, and as well as the Cowboy Trail there, especially in the, uh, you know, the southern part of the road there, south of Calgary there, you definitely see that as well, where you got kind of the prairies, foothills and mountains all in one view there, and uh, you know, that definitely summarizes that shield right there, and uh, you know, that's one of the things that I think makes Alberta great there. Also, you know, you can drive for, <coughs> excuse me, an hour anywhere and go to a big lake, because there's definitely tons of lakes in Alberta as well, and tons of rivers, <coughs> excuse me, but, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, a very, very beautiful diverse landscape province there, and, you know, you definitely feel the pride when you drive back in Alberta, depending if you're, you know, from the prairies or from the mountains there, or even way the heck up in, uh, on the 60th parallel, or coming in from Montana, when you see that big, big sign that says, Welcome to Alberta, Wild Rose Country, you definitely feel that pride that, uh, you know, that's, that's my home province, and, uh, I do proudly, you know, see that, uh, well, flower when I pick it out there, you know, it's that perfect pink, pink color there, and, you know, that's probably still says that on our license plates still today, that it says Wild Rose Country, and, uh, you know, it's the unofficial model for Alberta, and definitely, you know, it's very diverse, landscape, rugged, everything all in between there, and, uh, that just say the only thing that Alberta does not have to have absolutely everything is an ocean coast, but, you know, it's kind of tough to do that where we are geographically here, so, uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, I, it's easy for me to say that since I live here that uh, Alberta is just the most diverse landscape province in Canada there, and, you know, prove me wrong, but uh, I just love to have this debate with others who, uh, who aren't from Alberta, and it's just kind of my way to try to sell my home province where I still live and from and you know just it's you know that's part of what makes who I am and you know the culture you know the, the oil and gas you know, western heritage and hospitality and everything in between here and it's uh that's what makes Alberta great that we're you know not landscape but we're all diverse in that so that's this person vlog here so I'll just say if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, all the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders. I mostly do talk Calgary sports and other sports in my home province of Alberta, Wild Rose Country there. But I also, you know, do personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and also share my experiences. Let's say I'm on the road, you know, seeing this beautiful province of Alberta, or also at sporting events here. You know, that's all the stuff that I post on my channel here. So if that sounds like you'd be interested to watch to follow along, with this Calgary sports fans journey, I also have my other social media links down in the description below there. So, as I say, I'll see you in the next video here. And, uh, you know, I'll just ask you, do you agree with me that uh, Alberta is the most diverse landscape province in Canada here? Or, you know, where else in Canada would you say has all those elements that I talk about here? And, you know, wherever else you are in the world, you know, what state or country you live from or were from or been to that uh, has all those elements that I talk about there but it's definitely nice that we have it all here in Alberta and not too far or at least within a day's drive from where I live here so I'll see you then next video.